The way Torah has been taught in yeshivas and chadorim, it's way too impersonal. Even the nigun, the, the whole style of teaching words, it's so impersonal. So you test a kid on Shabbos, and he knows. And he said, in Yiddish and in English, El Hashem, Hashem, El Moshe Tu, Moshe Daber, speak El Bnei Yisrael to the... Uh, so who said to whom? Okay, the brighter ones? Yeah. Yeah, the Abish said to Moshe. But if you ask, really? The Abish that speaks to a human being? Huh? That's what my Rebbe said. But it never, it never caught your attention that the Abish that is speaking to a human being? So maybe it's nice that it's Vipashtas. Yeah, Abish speaks to people. I don't know, maybe there's something nice about that. But it's so impersonal. So there's this little piece in the Rishimus, and I've talked about it this la about this last year. It's a, it's a, it's mamish like four sentences, the whole story. But the the Rebbe, the Fedik Rebbe, told the Rebbe, and the Rebbe wrote it down. Only two times the Fedik Rebbe is saying, only twice in my childhood. I heard my father be Maver Sedra. Once Parshas Lech Lecha and once Parshas Vayera. And hearing my father be Maver Sedra made me into a Baal Tshuva. A Baal Tshuva. It was before Bar Mitzvah. And then the Rebbe says like this. I saw my father saying the words Vayemer Hashem el Avram and there were tears running down his face. Did I just sing by the Dolphin? By the Rebbe Rashab. There were tears of Tainug. And you could see the goof to gate from the Neim Musalakus. He saw his father dissolving into the sweetness of Elokus. It's an amazing thing. That's it. That's the whole piece. So the Rebbe Rashab is saying, Vayemer Hashem el Avram, and he cannot contain the tainuk that he's feeling, and it has to come out in tears. So what do we now know? That you have to be my <laughs> What do we now know? We now know the words Vayemer Hashem El Avram are sweet to, to such a degree that, that it's hard to contain. There is so much tainug in those words that the Rebbe Rashab could not contain it. And Libei Kepischei Shalulam. He had a large capacity. So, what is it about those words? They're not, they're not the most uh, emotional. It doesn't... How does that compare to Veniflino Anivi Amcha? Whatever. If you think about it, you come to an interesting insight. If the Rebbe Rashab 
is finding so much pleasure in those words, how much pleasure was Avram having when the Abish that is yet Avram? In other words, the Rebbe Rashab was actually feeling Avram's Tainug. I mean, if reading the words gives you so much Tainug, I mean, imagine Avram himself. So this little story is telling us not only about the Rebbe Rashab. If you've ever wondered, and we should have wondered, but we don't. Vayemer Hashem al Avram. Eh, what? Wait a minute. Vayemer Hashem al Avram doesn't deserve any attention at all? If you were Avram, and Vayemer Hashem al Avram, how would you feel? What is the experience of having the Abish to speak to you? Come to you in Bavel. How much Tainig is in that? How do you survive it even? So look what you do. You say to a child, Vayemer Hashem el Avram, and you let it go. Shouldn't you be asking? Didn't Avram die from that? No? In Matan Teireh, there was a crowd. Here it's one. Allah has come. Allah has come. I know a guy who But collapse from from. I got no guy who got an award from the Queen, and he almost died. How embarrassing is that? So. He almost died out of pachad. Um, being overwhelmed, I guess, from the so without this story, I would have assumed that he, that he almost died from pachad. But what do we see from the story? He almost died from the from the from the tainug of it. But why should a child not be made aware of this? So the Rebbe Rashab came home and, and cried because the Rebbe didn't talk to him, he only talked to Avram. So the Rebbe says, why are we told the story? Because everybody should have that. I'll call upon him. You start off with a story that tells you something about the Rebbe Rashab and you have an insight into, into Avram. The Rebbe Rashab was reflecting Avram's Tainug. Then you take it a step further. Avram was the Merkava. And we know what a Merkava means. If Avram the Merkava was crying from Tainug, over speaking to, to Avram, what did I just say? If the Rebbe Rashab is crying from pleasure over talking to Avram, he's a Merkava. He's crying, the Ebershter is not. He's feeling the Tainug, and the Ebershter is not, then he's not a Merkava. So we start off with the Rebbe Rashab. He felt the Tainug in those words. What is the Tainug in those words? The Tainug that, Av that Avram felt when the Ebershter spoke to him. But now take it a step further. And when the Ebershter spoke to Avram, did the Ebershter have Tainug? Was it a pleasure for him? Avram was certainly a Merkava. So if it was a pleasure for him, 
he was reflecting the pleasure of the Ebrishter. The Rebbe Rashab is a Merkava. So when he is crying from pleasure, it means that Avram is crying from pleasure, which means that the Ebrishter is crying from pleasure. Some people walk away with a pachad, like the Bioil. <laughs> and some people walk away like Mayim Karamal Nefesh Ayeva. That's the Rebbe, that's Like counting diamonds. So just, a, a, again, a marshal. You read Vayemer Hashem El Avram and it means absolutely nothing. So to the average person, you say, Vayemer Hashem El Avram. The Ebrist has said to Avram. And what are people thinking? Yeah, what, what did he say? Come on, that's just an introduction. So what did he say? You miss it completely. There's no significance in the words Vayemer Hashem al Avram. It's just an introduction to what the Ebrishter said to Avram. What did the Ebrishter say to Avram? Give up everything. Give it all up. And Avram had Mercedes Nefesh. He did it. It was the first Nisayan. Nobody's going to cry from pleasure. Where's the pleasure? So Rashi says, Lech lecho, letevoscho. Okay, it's, it's a little more enjoyable. <laughs> but without chassidus? That whole thing is like, no so. There's no spilus, there's no, there's no tainug, there's no gishmak. So. so you start off with a posuk, or at least part of the posuk, that means absolutely nothing. By the way, just for the fun of it, where in Taita is there a posuk that ends with the word Yaakov? Hmm? You don't expect a posik to end with the word Yaakov. It's always Vayemar Hashem El Yaakov. That's just always the beginning of the posik. Where is there a posik that ends with the word Yaakov? The Malach asked him, what mash... Ma uh, Shemcha? Vayemer Yaakov. <laughs> anyway, so Vayemer Hashem El Avram is just, that's just an introduction. Right? Not by the Rebbe Hashab. Because before the Abishta said Lech Lecha, was Avraham already feeling this time look that you could die from? What's the difference what the Ebrishter said? The Ebrishter came to talk to you. You can't die from that? So, if you stop for a moment and just give it the attention it deserves, suddenly this non-entity, this, this hachona to a, sta to a statement, becomes a ne'imus elokus. Not only for the Rebbe Rashab. Then you have to wonder, well, how did Avram feel? 
And then you have to wonder, how did Eberster feel? Wasn't Avraham reflecting the Eberster's time? So you can approach it as an issue of Yediyah Hashem, which is a big issue. You say that you say this Ramud Hachochma. You can't you can't mess with that. Without that, you're missing the whole foundation of Torah. So you can approach it from the from the Yediyah Hashem angle, or you can approach it from. Sava HaKadosh Baruch Hu Liyaz Leidira B'Tachtein But how will you explain it to the second, second grader? And he won't understand what you're talking about. And we can understand it for the second grader to what I know, what's that, you know. I don't think you have to explain it. You just have to draw attention. I can say the story, give the importance of it. Make a big deal out of it. Just say, you say, wow. That's it. The Hebrew went to Avram. Wow. How do you feel to meet the guy who built the big, big building? Someone who made the, the heavens and the earth and the yeah, but that's already for a little bit older. But just in your own tone of voice, even. So a kid comes home from it. and the said, You're killing it. You're, kill, you, you're destroying it. So, what taki is the Tainug? Of Vayemer Hashem El Avram. Avram's Tainuk. What, what is Avram's Tainuk? Avram is not even Avraham. He's Avram. And he's living over there wherever. Yeah? And he's doing the best. He's, he's wonderful. Sidas Nefesh and the Abish that comes to him. The Abish that comes to him. Vayemer Hashem El Avram. Not the other way. So of course, speaking to the Abish that is a fantastic Tainug. But the fact that the Abish that is looking for you. There was a guy who came to a class in Chabad House, and they were learning uh, with the parsha of the Makis, of, uh, so, so the guy was explaining, the Shliach was explaining that uh, the Ebrish that told, told the Yidden to put the blood on the doorposts so that they'll know that this is a Jewish house. This guy was a Tmimus Dikirid, and the guy said, I hate that. And he went home and he took the mezuzah off his door. He says, if the Eberstein needs me to put a mezuzah on the door that he should know that I'm a Jew, taking the mezuzah off. <laughs> the, you don't know me? I have to put blood on my door that you should... Not acceptable. The fact that the Abish there comes looking for Avram, that's already... The Tainug of the Abish there speaking to Avram, big Tainug. What's overwhelming that it has to come out in tears? The Eberstead is looking for Avram.
a, a practical question. When the Ebrishter, when the Torah introduces Noyach, it says, Noyach ish tzaddik, motzachin be'ine Hashem, eselikim is halach Noyach. It's a whole, a whole hesped. <laughs> how, how does the Torah introduce Avram? Yeah. Huh? Tzadik, at least B'deirisov, no? Siras Nefesh, Chacham, Hikiras Beire, Vayyeme Hashem El Avram. Noyach Motzah Chein Be'enei Hashem. That's an incredible statement also. That a human being can be what do you say by 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 the benoist slavchod? Where does where does Rashi say? Kain benoist slavchod devres. No, what is the lashon there? How incredible that the that the Abish that is maskim to your words. No, where's the lashon? Here, a balkade is not going to help. <laughs> So, by, by Noyach, Noyach was Motzachin. Something special about Noyach. He was charming. And he was a tzaddik. It doesn't tell you that much about the Ebrishter. When it comes to the relationship between the Eberstedt and Avram, it's all the Eberstedt. <coughs> like the Eberstedt looking for Avram. Not Avram being something special. And that's why we're not told what happened the first 70 years of his life. 75. Because that's what he was. What, what we need to know about the relationship between the Eberstedt and Yidden is that this is the Eberstedt's move. This is completely about the Eberstedt. Ata b'chartonu mikolam. But at any rate, the excitement and the greatness of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Is that loyal Yidei Malach, loyal Yidei Shliach, the Eibush that came to take us out of Mitzrayim. Coming out of Mitzrayim is already just a prat, it's not so exciting anymore. What's exciting is, he came to take us. Mm -hmm. I think that that has been has been lost somewhere in the process, and that without it, as soon as a kid becomes a little bit of a chacham, he doesn't see he doesn't see what the connection is. I have to do this. I have to do that. I don't understand what that means. You know what that leads to. We end up going to the oils just for the cookies. Forget who we're actually going to. Yeah. And, you know, we try very hard to give children uh, a sense of his cashless. How do you do that? If it's not personal, then, then what? Then what is it? So here, here's here's the point of the whole thing. Yiddishkeit, Teira, Chinuch, it's become too impersonal.
and the word Kabbalah soil has is abused. Kabbalah soil doesn't mean I have to force you to daven. <laughs> Whose oil is this? Mine, yours. Kabbalah's oil means the person is mekabal the oil, not you put it on him. So you tell a child, you have to daven, Kabbalah soil. There's no Kabbalah soil. There's just resentment. So we have to do everything we can to bring the Abishtib down to earth. And the first step in Dira Betachtainen is that a Lukus makes sense to a Seicho Anushi. That's a Dira Betachtainen. As long as the Ebesh that doesn't make sense, then he's Bashamayim. Ram al kol goyim Hashem. We have to bring him down. <clears throat> so I'm just talking to the boys, and we're going to get around to this. Yad Hashem. Did we talk about this last year? When the Torah says Yad Hashem, yes, Yad, no, Yad, what, what's the story? Hmm? It's a muscle. If I tell you that I have a Yad, but I don't have a yad. What's the marshal? It's a lie, not a marshal. <laughs> so what's the marshal? Yad Hashem. And the nimshal is. Rambam yeah. says that it's all marshal. Yeah. He doesn't say it's all false. Uh -huh. Right. So Rambam yeah, says that that ways that a way that he's minding the world, a systematic way that he's minding the world. Right. And so that's just a muscle. So what's that's an image. The word hand is a muscle. My hand is a muscle. Right. So your hand is only a muscle of a hand. Right. So his hand is spirit spirit hand. It's a real hand. The nimshul is more real than the mushul, no? Must be. Yeah. So, the, the Yad Hashem is, is, is a literal Yad, a real Yad, an actual Yad. So when you say, don't take it literally, that's not correct. Of course, literally. Ein mikra yetzim you have to be yetzi dvarim migash miyusan, not mipshutan. So the Ebrish says, Yad is a Yad, a real Yad. Why is a human's arm called by the same word? Because it's a mushroom. So the human yad is not a real yad. It's only a mushal on a yad. Sometimes it says the other way. The, the 
the spheres have their names because they do a pa'ula, that's all. There is the pa'ula that's done the matter by that way. But which one comes first? It's a deep question. You can get it. There's a mimer that says that that uh, the shagrit of Eretz and Kalim is the in in the Shana Hugo because really the Adi was the thought first of the Adi. Yeah, that's that's in Kavon. Yeah. Not to say that it's not true. It is. Yeah. Anyway, so so when you teach, you say anything about the Ebrishta. It, ha- it, it has to, in our own mind and to the, and to the, to the, to the student, it has to sound like MS La Amita. To say Yad Hashem. David doesn't really have a Yad, we're just saying. That's it, you, you've destroyed the whole title. Pi Hashem. No, 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 no. David Shah doesn't have a mouth. No, no. So why you? Taylor says he has a mouth. No, no. Okay, so Taylor says this is not allowed. Eh, it doesn't really mean not allowed. <laughs> Once you start playing, it's... it's so a human being gets angry. David Shah doesn't get angry. That's backwards. The only reason we get angry is because we were made B'Tselem Elikim. So we are a poor example of him. So if we get angry, then obviously he gets angry. But his anger is real. Our anger is pathetic. And that's why Kol is Kilo Eved What are you getting angry? What are you, David? Abish, they gets angry. What are you getting angry? <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Yeah, so if you're getting angry because halach the bedrocha, it's good. If you're getting angry because somebody scratched your car, that's a different story. That's what it means that a parent does pretend to be angry. Right. It's like, like a difference between the Alta Rebbe going to sleep Friday afternoon and Hillel Paracher going to sleep Friday afternoon. That's a galek shlofen. So, Just in simple, the Rebbe said about Schar uh, that uh, the astronaut in the, in the space capsule, if he pushes the wrong button, then Kula Alma made that he deserves a death penalty. Favos, because the space capsule cost $13 billion. <laughs> You mess up a thirteen billion dollar machine. Everybody agrees you should be chayiv misa. The Rebbe said, even though it's not your thirteen billion dollars, <laughs> but just that number is like whoa. When a person sins, he's destroying the world. Shenivre basara my mores. That's much worse than, much more valuable than thirteen billion dollars. So what does it mean that Ebrishta gets angry but, and his anger is real? It's his world. If you destroy his world, you're, you're destroying him. Why is it much more valuable? The world? Yeah. It took him six days to make it. But, just saying, but I saw that my mother is. Just saying a few <laughs> words. Right. But trillion billion dollars is something that I assume most people takes more than six days to make it. And, um, and it's not just saying a couple of words. Right. But a couple of words by the Ibrishta is much more 
what it, what it takes a, a, a scientist years to create, that Abishta does it in a word. But it's just as awesome. Then it's not saying it's not as much effort. Because yeah. The person understands what he does because it's his effort. But we're not talking about effort. We're talking about value. Mm -hmm. The value of the world that Abishta created is much greater than a capsule. It's not value doesn't get greater by effort? No, the person gets greater. Get, you get more credit. But the thing is what it is. Saying why would the Abishta be more upset if he, so to speak, he's saying he didn't put as much effort because it took him a lot easier than I mean, person to understand that his effort. People get upset over how much effort they put into something that got ruined. It's not a valuable thing. And so if you smash my phone, but I have a million dollars, so I could buy another one, and I probably won't be as upset about it. So yeah, they will cry over the little power. That's why the Mishnah needs expl explaining. Basara my modis nivrahoilam. Why? To punish the Russia for destroying a world that took ten my mother, <laughs> as if <laughs> it's a chizgi <laughs> matter with the ten my mothers. But the point I'm trying to make is this: to the Ebrister, his creation, which is real, justifies anger. You're a guest in his house. You're here for a couple of years. It's not your world. What are you getting angry about? I was asking to identify the, the, what, what does it mean that someone's angry. So it's the same thing that anyone could imagine what anger is. It's the same type of anger. Is you did something to me. Not you did something to me. This is so important to me that it hurts me that you're destroying it. Sadness. Oh, it hurts. It's pain. By that anger. That's what anger is. Anger is the further. Anger is at the an expression of the pain. But it's at focused on the. Um, yeah, on, on the cause. Right. So in this case. So two things. First of all, the the issue is real. Right. The cause is real. So the Ebrishta's anger is much more real than ours. Because we have really no reason to get angry. That's what I get. Why, why anger is not good for you and I, I understand. But now, how to apply that to Hashem? Why is that justified? Because the anger part of it. I don't mean why is it justified. Like, I don't mean justify Hashem, but why, why would we explain that Hashem is angry at the person that did it? Because you're destroying. Be, be sad that you made the wrong, right? He's sad too. Fine, so, sad. so why, we, why, we push, why, we, why would Hashem also be angry? So you, we're trying to define what anger is in the first place. Okay. What is anger? It's the feeling of, of the pain coming out at the cause of the pain, like you said. Right. So why, why, like let's say we need to punish a kid, right? So we don't. We, we don't want to have the anger at the kid who's in the problem. We want to focus on the problem as an objective fact. And we want to do the consequence and everything. We want to keep learning the lesson, but we don't want to connect the, the subject that would happen, to, the, the thing that happened to the person that did it, to the kid that did, made the trouble. Because we don't want to have any finger, feeling of anger at him. Why? Because, well, by you, maybe because it could lead to a negative effect. And very because he didn't sin against you. That's the problem. If you get angry that the kid didn't listen to you and didn't make a bracha, you're sending the wrong message. He did something against you? Imagine a teacher saying, oh, you forgot to make the bracha? I forgive you. <laughs> Excuse me, who are you? So, if the Abishta's Yad is more real than our Yad. And his anger is more real than our anger. And his Tainug is more real than our Tainug. Then the statement, Nesave HaKadosh Baruch takes on a whole new meaning. Nesave HaKadosh Baruch Well, we don't mean he had a Taiva. He doesn't have Taivas. Now then what do you mean?
you mean his taiva is much more real than our taiva. This, this is getting to be a little awesome. So here's this controversial thing that's going on. So. This taiva is optional or not optional? It could be that Ebesha shouldn't have this taiva. This taiva. Rebbe Hashab said, the Abish that had a taiva, and that's our mazel. <laughs> like, good for us that he had that taiva, otherwise. But that taiva could be yes, could be no. Is, is, that, is that what the word taiva is supposed to suggest? He had a taiva. He didn't have to have the taiva, but he had a taiva. That's a human taiva. His taiva is real. What does that mean? <coughs> Rebbe Sajov came to Lubavitch in the times of the Rebbe Rashab, and uh, I don't know if he was intentional or not intentional. He, uh, he saw the Rebbe, it was on Pesach, and he saw the Rebbe smoking. And he said, there's a psashayla with the glue on the paper of the cigarette that may be... So the Rebbe put away the cigarette, and the Rebbe said, I should. So this Rav said, Skafia. Chassidim threw him out. <laughs> They drove him out of town. A Rebbe should have his kafya. So when it says that the Ebesh that have a taiva, the Sava, the Baruch, you know, <laughs> it's kafya. You have to give in to every taiva. Is that, is, that, is that the kind of taiva we're talking about? Whether it's a real or whether it's by choice are two different questions. So I'm asking, is it is it optional? It could be not or is, is that a possibility? Where is the system? The Khir is also So the taiva was a bechila? Is there such a thing as choosing to have a taiva? <laughs> Okay, so this is really crucial. Bechir Chofshis means there was no choice. No? A regular Bechir means it could be this, could be that. Bechir Chofshis means this is the way it is, it can't be any other way. Multiple choice test with one option. Hmm? It means it can't change. There's no basis for it to change. But why, it why can't it change? There's no cause for it to change. In other words? But it's still proactive. If there's no cause for it to change, there's no cause for it to be. Isn't that what Bechir Chafshis means? There's no cause. So to say, Ata Bechartanu Mikol Ha'amim, you could have chosen somebody else, meaning you can still choose somebody else? If it's Bechir Ha'afshah, why, why can't he change his mind? To even suggest that the Abish that chose the Yidden, but he could choose somebody else. That's, that's not Apicursus Mamish. <laughs> All Taira and Mitzvahs, the Abish there was Becher, which means he could change his mind and you don't need Taira. That's not Mamish Apicursus. <laughs> So let's it sounds like there's a piece of smoking. 
Dat wil je net gaan. Dus we zijn snel twist maken. Nou, verkeerd. If, if there's a twist is maken voor de nifga, then there could be a change. Because there's no twist as mokim, that's why there cannot be a change. Why? Because bechir chafshis means nothing about the nifchar influenced the bechir. It's coming purely and completely from atzmos. Atzmos can't change. It, it, is a, it is a little bit confusing. <laughs> you tell people, Bechir Chafshis means there was no choice. That's a little confusing, no? Bechir means free of influence. But when something is without any influence, then it's absolute. Then it's atmos. How can it change? So why was it so heretical that he stressed the ball? That he could have chosen someone else and could have stopped it. Couldn't. Why not? Because the real meaning of Bechira Chavshis is it can't be any other way. Bechira Chavshis means <coughs> nothing influenced me. I, me, just I am like this. Yidin and Torah, that's me. And if that's me, can't change. So where does it say in Chassidus? In many places it says Bechira Chavshis means that the, that the Bechira came from Atmos. No, if it comes from Atmos, it can't change. So, yeah, there's no before and after. So what does it mean? Ben kach or ben kach bonai heim or lachlifam beuma acheres. Any rights? Just the other about the. E F sure. This is. I mean, Let me sum it up very briefly, and it's something that, that needs a lot of... Chassidus, Teiras Chassidus, creates the Chassid. It's not like in Chagas. In Chagas, the Chassid creates the Chassidus. In Chabad, the Chassidus creates the Chassid. In the first three generations of Chabad, the Chassidus was the value of Pnimius over Makif. That was Chassidus. It created Pnimius de Kiyidin, Bardas. Not affected by miracles, not affected by, by Malochim, Gilial Yohu. That was not interesting. That was the next three generations from the Rebbe Marash, the Rebbe Rashab, and the Friedrich Rebbe. The Chassidus was that Etzem is more important than Giluyim. The first three generations was that Pnimis is more Emes than Makif. The next three generations was that Etzem is more Emes than Giluyim. 
like chukim is closer to the emes than 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 mishpatim. Something you can see from looking at the Gemara. Yeah. The whole Samach Vav, the whole, the whole Samachs, all the Samach. It's one Nekud. That Torah is, there's an Etzem, and the Etzem is built in the Shtane, and built in built in uh, Eschalik. What kind of Chosid did that create? If you focus on the Etzem, then there's no, there's no wiggle room. There's no. If you're talking about Giluyim, a person does an Aveda, it depends on it. it's Beshegig, Mazid, Einus, Tinek Shanishba. Makes a difference. When you're talking about Etzem, it doesn't make a difference. So what does it mean? If there's an etzem to the mitzvah, then there's no wiggle room. That produces mesidus nefesh. It can't be. Any, it can't be any other way. So somebody, some shmendrik, asked the Mendel Futterfas, "How did you do it? Where did you get such strength to stand up against everything and not give in on anything?" And his answer was, "What was the choice?" He didn't see a choice. It's not like he was strong. The guy said, I don't understand. There's always a choice. So Mendel said, if you were there, you would have done exactly the same thing. I don't think so. <laughs> but if you're raised with this Chsidus, that MS is MS, Etzem is Etzem, Shabbos is Shabbos, then, then there is no working on Shabbos. So by the sixth generation, you had amazing Chsidim. Bardas, Pnimi, Mesiris Nefesh. The Deira Shvi, and the Shvi is Shabbos. The Deir Hashvi is no more elevating the Nivra. Now you have to bring the Beira into the world. So the first six generations was a Hachona, elevating the Nivra. How great can a, can a Jew be? He can be a Pnimi, he can be a Balmesiris Nefesh. The Rebbe came and said, enough. Stop polishing buttons. They're polished, they're wonderful. Now, you have to bring the Shechina down the matter. But in, understand what this means. You have to be a Pnimi, you have to have Mesiris Nefesh, and you have to bring the Shechina the matter. No. You have to be a Pnimi, because it's you. And you have to have Mercedes Nefesh, because it's you. You have to bring the Shechina down Lamata. Because the Shechina wants to be Lamata. Not because you have to. It's not your Chiv. It's his expectation. The Eberstedt is waiting to come down Lamata in Adir B'Tachtenu. It's about him. It's not about us anymore. That's the difference between Shabbos and Chayil. Chayil is to elevate the Nivra, to fix the world. Shabbos is Shabbos Hayyem Lashem. So when the Rebbe introduced the Deir Ashvi, he was basically saying, we are now going to switch from Nivra to Beira. Like, for example, concerning Mashiach, for six generations, or for 6,000 years, the mitzvah and the chiyuv was on the person to believe in Mashiach. You have to believe more, you have to strengthen your emunah, you have to deepen your emunah. 
It was all about you. That ever came along and said, your emuna in Mashiach is not accomplishing anything. We need, Mashiach has to come down. So if you have more emuna, you're not helping. You see, so, so, so the Rebbe took it from us to, to what needs to happen, to Mashiach, from us to the Ebeshter. The Ebeshter wants a Dira B'tachtenim. Yeah, but I have to work on becoming more of a Pnimi. No, you don't. We had time for that. <laughs> so, the, so the Rebbe says, go on Shlichus. Go make a Dira B'tachtenim. And you say, but the Rebbe, I have my own problems. I have to work on myself. I've laid the pnimi. Im halev. Teich halev. The Rebbe said, you selfish little creature. How can you do this? The Hebrew that is waiting and, and you're thinking about yourself? So if you've heard, there was resistance to shlichus. Chassidim didn't want to go. Which Chassidim? The best. The best Chassidim. The most Pnimis Dike and the biggest Bali Mesiris Nefesh said no. Does this simplify the teaching? Yeah. There's no place of saying after someone to make sure I'm going to serve them. Before I start teaching? That principle, kshet atzmocha, v'achakach kshet achedim, the Rebbe dismissed that. I don't want to hear your problems. You know Aleph? Go teach Aleph. When are you going to learn Bayes? You won't. However, when you teach Aleph, you will gain more than if you sat and tried to learn Bayes. In other words, what Chassidim accomplished, davening ba'arichas, sitting under the talus for six hours, you will accomplish it by your shlichas. Leveling experience. Nasa moichei v'li be'zakim elef pa'mem kocha. You're not sacrificing anything. But stop thinking about yourself. So halachically, what is the difference between Chayl and Shabbos? On Shabbos, you're not allowed to take the Pseilus Metei Chayl. You're allowed to take the Eichel from the Pseilus. And what's going to happen with the Pseilus? Heim kolim alehem. It used to be sur mira, then asay teiv. The Rebbe said, that's during the week. On Shabbos, that's not allowed. Sur mira means taking the Pseilus from the Eichel, metarnished. So the Rebbe actually said, Avedas habirurim yigendikt. You know how many years ago that was? <laughs> and what have we been doing since then? The world doesn't need bitter. Maybe more than ever. So what does it mean, Avedas habirurim yigendikt? The Avedas chayl. You can't take psalis from Eichel anymore. But the world still needs bitter. Yeah. So take the Eichel from the Pseilus. And the Pseilus, I'm calling the Malayim. <clears throat> That's why the Rebbe started Miftoyim. What does it mean practically? Practically. Stop a guy in the street and ask him to put on film. Don't wash Neglavasa with him. Don't take him to the Mikveh. Don't teach him Kavanda Sarizal. <laughs> 
Put on the tefillin. Say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sir made that first, no? No. Ask a woman to light candles on Friday night. But she's, gonna not, she's not going to keep Shabbos. Ask her to light Shabbos candles. So what about the Sur Mera? The Ra will fall away by itself because it's Shabbos. And that's what Mashiach is. Even that you can, you know. It's not Mitzvah Trefus. <laughs> it's Mitzvah Kashrus. It's Mitzvah but And Taras HaMashpacha, by the way. It's another whole subject. Huh? It's not, it's not just a Sur yeah, yeah. Because Taras HaMishpacha is not just Nida. It's Mishpacha. There's more to Mishpacha than, than two weeks and, 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 and a Mikveh. It's a Mishpacha leben. Anyway, so Mashiach is Yem Shikuli Shabbos. So again, everything by the Rebbe was the Ebeshter, not us. So when the Rebbe said, I am in the Welt mit Torah, bring the Basi Lagani, bring Iker Shechina Lamata. When the Rebbe was saying this in Tavshin Yud Aleph, or Yud Beis, who was sitting there by the Fabrengen? <laughs> Who was by the Fabrengen? Who was the Rebbe talking to? Mostly tired, broken, confused immigrants <laughs> who are trying to get used to America. They're trying to learn how to, how to drive a car, how to speak English. And the Rebbe is saying, I am in the world. Like, who? But also the chassidus, they were raised on the Rebbe Rashab's chassidus. So the Rebbe is saying, go out there and never mind the world. And the chassidim sitting at the fabreng and are thinking, but I've chuvet on, I've chattas no urim. So can you imagine? The Rebbe says to her, far of He said, what's going to be with my chattas no urim? Do you see this? So we know that many, many chassidim left after the Tzemach Tzedek because the Rebbe Marash introduced a little change and people couldn't handle it. What was the change? Not Pnimis and Makif, Giluyim and Etzem. They couldn't handle it. Look at the change the Rebbe created. People couldn't handle it. It was just too much. No streimu. <laughs> no crying by davening. What is this? What happened to chassidus? <laughs> so you hear, actually, you even hear shluchim saying, shlichus is an emergency uh, first responder. <laughs> Once the emergency is over, we'll go back to chassidus. Yeah, it's that bad. This is not chassidus. The Rebbe of Shabbos chassidus. Even the Friedrich Rebbe. Yeah, he had no serious nefesh, but where's chassidus? So, what kind of chosid did the Rebbe create? 
The Rebbe is chassidus. What kind of chassid did that create? A pnimi, mesiris nefesh. Yes, but what's new? If you're talking about the Ebeshter, the Ebeshter is waiting for Adira Betachtainim. There are no limits. There's no limits. Pnimi is Makif. Okay, I mean, it's, it's a subject, it's a limited subject. Makifim is, is stronger, but, but, pnimi, but Pnimi is more emes. All right, it's. Giluyim and Etzem. It's also, it's like a finite subject and you have to work on it and some will become and some won't become. And yeah, big chsidim, little chsidim. When you're talking about the Ebersh there, there are no limits. Like the whole idea of shlichas was not only go out and tell people what to do. Who are you sending? The most qualified, the biggest tzaddikim? No. Anybody, whoever is willing to go, go. You know, Aleph, teach Aleph. There's no limits. There's no qualifications. You don't have to be on a madrege. Not, nothing. No. You're talking about the Abish that is waiting. So we're going to sit here and quibble about who's on a higher madrege? Once you bring the Abish that into the picture, it changes everything. So look at what look at what Lubavitch Chassidim have become. Whatever you want, whatever you need. Who are the best first responders after a flood? Lubavitchers. <laughs> they don't know how to add or how to spell, but they know how to get a helicopter when nobody else can. Where is this coming from? The mentality of there are no limits. You're a shmendrik who barely made it through yeshiva. Go talk to the prime minister of the country and tell them the sheva mitzvahs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can't add or subtract. Build a building. Seven million. Ten million. Okay. Where, what is this? There's no limits. The Eberstedt is waiting. What are you going to you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna hesitate? Me and you, Moni. You said that you should wait for a nervous accident. How do you define nervous accident? What do you think it is? Ah, good question. First of all, when we say the Eberstedt is waiting, who are we talking about? Memalu kolalmim, sevev kolalmim, lifnei atzimtzum. What are you talking about? Huh? Yes, we're talking about him, and him is much greater than etzem, right? Because etzem is built in mischalik, built in this gala. There are rules. There are no rules on him. Etzem can't come in agili. Maybe she can't come in a gilly. Nigla kveda shem veroka bosa yada. Yeah, but that can't be the etzem. No, it is the etzem. But it's him. Okay, so. Dira loy. Him. Not, not memala kalalman. And what is a dira? So here again, you have to bring it down to earth. If a man says to a woman, let's build a house, he means get a hammer? <laughs> what is he saying? <laughs> let's make a dira. Okay, I'll get the hammer, you get the screwdriver, we'll make a dira. No, 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 no come on. <laughs> He's not asking you to build him an apartment. Because that's what it sounds like to most people. Make me a place where I can live and where you're going to live. I don't know, go find yourself a place. 
So the Torah says, Befeidish. V'osuli migdash v'shachanti. With you, not without you. Because without you, I don't need a dira. Maloy kolor, it's crazy. What do I need a dira for? So what really is the dira betachtayna? The dira betachtayna means you... He wants to have you. Not just that you should be like dedicated to him, right? You should be him. Basar <coughs> Echad. You know, for that to be complete, the 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 oilam, the 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 surroundings, the setting also has to be elukus. So we've got to fix that impression. We have to make him a dira betachtenim, and uh, when we make him a dira betachtenim, he'll pay us. Like a good contractor. And it'll be, it'll be a big, big payment will be great. Very big schaar. So impersonal. So that's why the Rebbe's, everybody, all the fr- from world was saying, what was the Rebbe talking about Mashiach? Everybody knows Mashiach is coming, Meheira, be Amen. What, what is, what's the Chiddush here? We want Mashiach. We are the marshal. If we want Mashiach, no. We are the Tselim Elikim. If the Tselim Elikim wants Mashiach, so what does he want? We're just the marshal. So what is the urgency that Mashiach has to come now? Because the Abishta wants it now. I wouldn't mind if it was next week. <laughs> I really wouldn't. <laughs> next week is good. Chedesh <laughs> Kislev, perfect. <laughs> no, it has to be now. And Chedron? Chedron is not. Eh. So why does it have to be now? Because we're not talking about you, we're talking about the Ibishta. So who needs Moshiach? We need Moshiach because we can't pay our mortgage. Matt's not Moshiach. If I gave you money to pay the mortgage, you'd be just as happy. Or even... We want Mashiach so that the people who died will come back. You don't need Mashiach for that. You have to hear some Mason without Mashiach. So whatever it is, it's not Mashiach. The Rebbe said, we want Mashiach. Like the Rambam says. Because of this, that, the other. So, the Dira B'tachtenen is basically saying, this is about the Ebeshter. He wants a Dira B'tachtenen, not you. 
It's a, that's a major shift. It's, it's a, the, the difference is mamit bleak vu. You're going from nivra to beira. That's like Shabbos to Chayu. So everything we do now, including the Aveda, has to be a Shabbos Dikya. This is Deir Ashri. It's Shabbos. <coughs> So today, to say less machshava trisabe is such a violation. The whole, the whole like Shabbos is Shabbos Hayyim Lashem. You say Hashem. I can't understand Hashem. This is not working. In fact, I'm not allowed to say this, but Bacharim are sitting and learning the Rebbe Rashab's my modern. Is that a good idea? The Rebbe Rashab's my modern are about elevating the Nivra. You're asking if it's a good idea? Chassidus creates the Chassid. We need the Rebbe's Chassidus. The Seder and Tamchet Mimim is that you learn the Rebbe Rashab is my mother. Well, of course, because the Rebbe Rashab was there. He was the Rebbe. I don't think anybody ever said in Lubavitch, Sheba Lubavitch, oh, what are you learning? The Rebbe Rashab is my mother. Alta Rebbe. Yeah, the Alta Rebbe is the Alta Rebbe. But you learned the Rebbe is my mother. So why are we still. So somebody came up with a brilliant. The Rebbe never said anything. What do you want the Rebbe to say? <laughs> what do you want the Rebbe to say? That was a chalin chap mamo, you know. To have our own seichel a little bit. There's like people who say, did Eben ever say he wasn't Mashiach? You want him to say that? <laughs> did Eben didn't say, learn my my mother. Come on. <laughs> if he has to ask you, it's pretty pathetic. <laughs> It, it is a little confusing. And that's why many, many shluchim even, they look back at what they learned in yeshiva, they don't see how it <laughs> applies to their life. They're out there doing shlichas, they're busy building mezdas, and, and all they learned was that you have to have a veda pnimis, and <laughs> something's, not, something's not working here. point of it is, the focus in Deir Hashvi is on the Eibishter, not on the Chassid. For six generations, it was on the Chassid. It made perfect sense to come to a Chassid and say, no, what's with you? Look at you. Where's, where's, your, where's your Edelkeit? Where's your Aveda? Where's your Pnimis? Where's your Mercedes Nefesh? Where are you, Ayeka? Today, I don't care where you are. Where is the Shechina? It wants to be in Tachtainim. What are you doing about that? 
So the, the pressure... But for that to happen, it has to be personal, as you mentioned. Huh? For that to happen, it is about me. It has to be personal. It's not about you, but it's yours to do. So where's the urgency? A person, you know, I don't think I was memale my chayv in making a dinner. What? Your chayv in making a dinner? The Eibishter is not here. So this explains the Rebbe's statement, Chav Ches Nissen, Lehevel Velodik. Everything I've done is Lehevel Velodik. You're the greatest leader we ever had. Kind of Hevel Velodik. Because he wasn't talking about himself. He was saying, we are supposed to bring the Shechina Lamata, and the Shechina is not Lamata, Hevel Velodik. So as a Malamid, we have to draw the attention of the Talmud to the Eberstedt and away from himself. A lot of boys who've gone off the, their OTD who complain that growing up in Yeshiva, everything was do this for the Rebbe, do that for the Rebbe, do the other thing for the Rebbe. And they felt like it was, how do I fit into the picture? Yeah. They were also told, do the Eberstah's mitzvahs. Eberstah said. So they resent him. <laughs> Tell the Eberstah to bug off. Why is that? Again, where is the Dogish? The Dogish was always, you have to do this, the Rebbe said. Well, then, I, then I hate the Rebbe. <laughs> Lum it up. You have to do this, Debrishta said. Hmm? Those same Bokhram, if the Rebbe said, do me a favor, wouldn't they wouldn't do it? Of course they would. That's not the way it came across. You have to do this, otherwise you're a shagitz, a nifrid, <laughs> which is worse than a shagitz. <laughs> Nobody likes that. And on Shabbos, you're not allowed to do that. They, they argue from Beit Zayt. On the one hand, the Ebrister will never be pleased, there's never enough. On the other hand, he doesn't even need it. It's like, <clears throat> Why, he doesn't care. On top of that, he doesn't He doesn't care. On top of that, Mitzvah's betel is lost in love. So, Atat Kumt Mashiach, Mitzvah's a bottle. So what, for this week you want me to keep the mitzvahs? <coughs> and the world is so messed up. What do you want from me? I should fix the world. Adam and Chava blew it. It's, it's, it's ruined. It's, this is not the plan. It's not supposed to happen. This whole thing is a bedievit. Leave me alone. And whatever, whatever right. but, but these are very strong kashas it's not if imtza dakta ma titan lo yisab what will stuff him here I have to be chilnisht 
I don't want to be a Benini. I hate Benini. They're boring. <laughs> most exciting. Uh-huh. It's the most exciting. The Benini. Yeah, a lot of drama. <laughs> Not a lot of pleasure. <laughs> anyway, if, if, if the Abishta doesn't really care, so, so. and if it's going to be over soon anyway, I should have Mercedes Nefesh for this. And it's a messed up plan. This is all plan B, but the ever, this is not even the way it's supposed to be. So what was real stuff in there? If you can't answer those questions, we're in trouble. <coughs> to bring you back to the beginning of Hayemer, what's your say? I understand it. Teach the kid in a way that he should understand. Give him a little a little... But I'm saying, of choral reading. It's not, it's not like a recite, it's not a way that uh, it's how they always thought. I don't think so. I think that in the olden days, a real Malamed, because there, right. there were a lot of bad Malamed. <laughs> even, even the Fiyadi Kedeba writes about the Malamed he hated. <laughs> it picked on him all the time. <laughs> so there were always bad Malamed. But the good Malamed, you came away with a geschmack, not just with a skill. The kid. Yeah, but I'm saying, but the way to teach, I'm saying the... Uh... Your geschmack carries over to the... But if you're just there to help him uh, to, uh, learn how to learn, okay, he learns how to learn, and then he doesn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> There's no... Doesn't stick. Another line they use: "Don't disturb me while I'm playing with my clam uh, this. <laughs> they don't say that word. They say whatever they, whatever the smartphone. But you see, even that, I have, have to give, I have to give kids benefit of the doubt, as much as they're. St- caught up in their, in their phone, in the game. If you came to them and said, I, I, I need you, I need a favor from you, they would put it down and they would do it. I'm not talking about a shoyim. But if you say, you shouldn't be doing that, you should be doing that. Lump it up. Pushing me around, telling Then, don't disturb me. But if you, if you need something, who would say no? Who would say no? So start working with them on a personal level. Or, or make the Abish the personal. Yeah, yeah, what I'm saying, the star. Yeah. Do me a favor. Yeah. Do the Rebbe a favor. Do the Abish a favor. Do the Abish a favor. Yeah, but he doesn't need anything. Oh, you see, that there's where, that's where we get into trouble. So you have to be able to explain. Im tzadakta matitan doesn't mean he doesn't need your mitzvahs. means he doesn't need your tzitkis. And mitzvahs betelus lo said lovey, chas v'sholem, chas v'sholem. Shum. Uh, what is that? Yeah. Shum. With a nacha. La osed lovi. Then we'll really do the mitzvah. What says mitzvahs betelis? What kind of? So what does the Gemara mean? Mitzvahs betelis. The tzivui, not the tefillin. You won't need a tzivui. So it means by yom tov also. Mayadim. Mayadim betelim because every day will be holy. So how will this day be different than the other days? But Pesach will be Pesach and Shavuos will be Shavuos. Well, time is in, time is the pastas, the drama thing. Yeah. 
I think it means, you'll be so happy. Who has time to eat? So what, are you going to eat on Tisha B'Av? But you won't eat, because who has time to eat? Only a you can understand that. Yes. We are, we are, we are gifted. Yeah. You got you to see when, when other chassidim and other fruma people hear a, a word of chassidus, what that does for them. One woman told me, it's oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen is ruach hachayim. It's the breath of life. So just to think about this, if, if the title was written in first person instead of third person, not Vayeme Hashem El Avram, the Omarti El Avram, it would be so much more real. Then you know, then you know who's talking. You know who you're dealing with. Not Bereshes Bore Elikim Es Hashemayim, Bereshes Borosi Es Hashemayim. Everything becomes personal. Look how powerful this is. Neyach Motzachem Be'enei Hashem. Neyach Motzachem Be'enei. It's, it's, it's such a powerful difference. So I would like to see people write children's books, stories from Toyota, in that tone. Anyway, Hatzlach Thank you very much. This, this... Um, but it's, it's Mamish Bikoach Nefesh.